Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my presentation. My name is Andreas Fleischmann. I'm a CEO of DigiPower from Germany. Let's first see what are the topics for today. I want to tell you a little bit about what is BIM, what elevator BIM tools are available, and answer the question, are you ready for BIM? Let's, let's have a look at BIM questions. So, these are typical terms that you heard here sometimes. So, do you know BIM or can you deliver as BIM? And or a sentence like, please send a BIM model. Let's have a look. What is building information modeling? BIM is a process. It's not a file format. Planning, designing, building and managing uh, the building is the process. With BIM, all involved parties work in one virtual digital building model. For example, architects, builders, facility managers, and finally also elevator companies are part of this BIM process. Are there any standards available? Yes, there are. There are several standards on its way. Most important to me is the Building Smart Organization. But there are also some others like National BIM Standard in the US, the BSI from the UK, and there are some others also in Australia and so on. I want to tell you a little bit about the BSI. Six months ago I visited a training, a um, masterclass training in, uh, at the BSI in London. And they talk about their standard which is the PES, uh, and it's the PES 1192. And you see there are a lot of paper materials that you can learn. To me, building information in modeling means moving from product modeling to process modeling. And you see here this chart uh, is also from the, from the PES. The green area shows you the, the, the improvement of information, the increasing information during the different life cycle phases and building phases. So what does BIM mean? Your elevator will become an asset of the building. To me everything is about assets, you know. Uh, your asset, your, your elevator finally is an asset in the building and for each asset in the building there is an asset information model and this consists of the documentation like elevator operation information, the 3D model of the elevator for graphical um, information, and also non-graphical data, 4D, 5D, and even more of these. I will explain this uh, in a few minutes. There are different BIM phases, and the BIM covers all life cycle phases of an asset. It starts with brief and concept, then the definition and design of your elevator, finally building, installing the elevator, and then there is a handover to the operation team of the building. And finally, the final phase is the in-use phase. And during all these phases, more and more information are added to the product information model. And the BIM process defines the interfaces between the different phases and between the employers and the vendors. And you as an elevator company are the vendor. Very important is the employer's information request. The employer determines which information he needs. I mean, if the architect tells you, I need a BIM model, he needs to tell you what the BIM model should consist of, which information he needs in the BIM model. Another important term is BIM LODs. Some people say level of detail, some others say level of development, which is the right term. And there are different level of developments defined um, for inside the different standards. They are quite similar, um, have different namings, but LOD 100, you see here in these graphics, you can see very good LOD 100 is a very, very basic uh, block uh, of steel construction. And during the different phases uh, in, in the building process, uh, the, the number of information increases more and more and your model becomes more and more detailed. What can you do with the 3D models? What will the architect do with the model? He can do some model walkthroughs, he can do clash detection, 
you can do some project visualization and for elevators for instance you can very clearly check floor to floor heights uh, between the different uh, floors so what do we see here just as a preview this is a sample BIM model of uh, six uh, elevators three by three face to face and you see which information are part of such a BIM model so this is a LOD 300 or 400 model and the architect will use this model to review and to place it into his building there are several other aspects and benefits of BIM uh, there are, I told you that there are different D's and 4D might be the time for construction planning, for schedule visualization. There are other D's like 5D for cost to make quantity takeoffs or real-time cost estimation. And 6D might be facilities management and life cycle management of your building. So what is what about your supply chain? You as an elevator company, this is some um, some graphics about supply chain and processes um, within BIM uh, inside the path. And but I don't want to explain at this point in detail what it all means. But I want to illustrate a little bit more what what it means to you. So let's say you are an elevator company and you will deliver to your contractor, but also, your guide rail supplier and your door supplier might be uh, a part of this BIM chain. And you need to tell, let's say, your door supplier which type of information he needs to deliver to you to deliver a proper BIM information to your contractor. You know, I'm from Digipara. We have different products with regards to BIM. And at this point, I would like to introduce you Digipara Elevator Architect. It is a tool that is used by more than 20,000 users worldwide and it allows the architect to quickly select and install an elevator in the building. And I have prepared a small video how that works. So you see here in the background there are four floors and the user simply answers some question and then he chooses from the different vendors that are part of this library which elevator he wants to install. Just by clicking a button you see that the whole model gets installed in the building. So very, very quickly he can install an elevator in the building. At any time he can also configure this elevator. So he can go to the configuration and let's say he wants to have rear entrances. So he just clicks rear entrances and updates the model, which will update the, the model of your, of your BIM model. What you see here in the background is what we call a simplified BIM model or LOD 100 model, but you can also switch to full BIM. And during full BIM, what happens is that the information about the four floors and the selections is sent in this case to the ThyssenKrupp server, which is in the cloud. And this ThyssenKrupp server generates a full BIM model. It is generated on the ThyssenKrupp server according to ThyssenKrupp rules and installs the whole model in the building. It's not just the doors and the car. You will see that also the guide rails, rail brackets, everything is installed exactly according to the specification of the architect, exactly according to the rules of ThyssenKrupp. And um, once the model is installed, the user can also inspect the different elements of the elevator. You see here, when you, when you select the door, you can exactly see what type of door has been installed in the model, uh, which size, and when you select the traction machine, you can see the type of traction machine, and so on. Another elevator BIM tool is DigiPara Lift Designer. It's a tool for elevator companies and it, it allows you to create elevator BIM models. And within this application, you have different options. One option is to customize the car and to um, define the design of the car, the coloring, and so on. And you know, also, this is required 
for you, for, from your client, from your architect, he requires exactly this information. You might also put humans into the cabin to illustrate, to clearly illustrate the size of the cabin. Um, so humans help you to understand how big is the car. You can also define lobby situations so that the architect can see how your elevator will look later on. Okay. Let's have a look at BIM adoption by country. The ACIF is the Australian BIM Forum. And it's interesting to see that the US has a, a percentage of BIM users with more than three years experience. This is an interesting percentage. You see that in the US, the BIM users, 75% of the BIM users have more than three years experience. They do it for a long time. And I remember some years, maybe six or seven years ago, we had a project with autos from the US. They requested BIM models to put it in the system. To me as a German, it's somehow a shame that in Germany we are so far behind. From, from Europe, mostly UK is in front. They have a front position. They are working hard to, to establish standards. And you see also Canada and Australia and Korea are far ahead. So I tried to make an information about BIM adoption in the elevator industry. And you, I, I split this for 2015, and you see that VT consultants are much, are much um, affected by already by BIM. Uh, the big elevator companies also. It depends on the country. A little bit less in 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 Germany, much in the UK, in the Northern Europe countries, um, and in the US, much more. Small and mid-sized elevator companies, and also the elevator component suppliers like door suppliers are almost not if not yet really affected by BIM because they have private houses and so on. But we foresee that for 2020 all these companies are much more affected by uh, the BIM technologies. So it's important to be prepared to have the right tools and so on. So the question is are you ready for BIM? Please consider your technologies, your software, hardware, your network. Consider your processes, like resources, knowledge, and skill. The leadership man and management must understand the importance of BIM and support the BIM people, the people who deliver the BIM information. Very, very important. And finally, you should have policies in your company com about procedures and workflows with regards to BIM. So, do you have a BIM champion? If not, you need one. So, I can recommend you to go to a BIM training, for example, to the BSI Masterclass in London. I attended this for one week. It helped me a lot to understand and to get a very good understanding of BIM. So, about the BIM question, do you know BIM? What I asked initially, probably you have learned a little bit today. Can you deliver as BIM? Please ask the architect what he needs. That's the important point. And the other question is, please send a BIM model. Yeah, you can. Use the right tools and you are able to send a BIM model. So this is what you see here is what we call the BIM vision building. The DigiPara vision building. You see there are escalators, there are elevators. We deliver the right tools to get these models, these information into the building and we have helped you to make your BIM. So in that way, thank you very much for attending my presentation. BIM up your elevator. If you have questions, you might ask it now.